Hey guys, welcome back. Recently I've been receiving a couple of questions asking me how I feel about the overall tier list for classes and duels. So today I thought I'd summarize my thoughts a little bit uh, and let you know what I think about the classes and duels right now. Now I've seen some tier lists out there right now on the internet, but I find myself not really agreeing with a lot of the choices they make. And coming from someone who has a relatively high MMR in, in Heroic Duels, who's played a lot of duels, I thought maybe that my thoughts would help you guys out a little bit to understand what exactly is really good in duels right now and what you should be avoiding. Now, it's worth pointing out that in duels, I feel like any class could go 12 wins. So this is not to say that the lower ranked classes can't be played in duels, but the higher tier classes definitely have an easier time of getting to high wins and finishing off 12 win runs. So the way this is going to work is that I'm going to be dividing the classes into three different tiers. Tier 1 will be classes that have a lot of different builds and don't really have any glaring weaknesses in either the early part of the run or the late part of the run and have a lot of ways to capitalize on getting further in the run and finishing the run off with 12 wins. Tier 2 decks or tier 2 classes will be classes that have some kind of weakness whether it be in the early part of the run or the late part of the run or which may not work out if you don't get offered the right treasures but which are still strong enough to be able to go 12 wins relatively easily if you construct your deck the right way and if you're given the right choices. And tier 3 classes are going to be classes that are quite a struggle to get to 12 wins with and really you're going to need to have a perfect set of choices in order to get there. And these, these classes also have glaring weaknesses which make it hard to get to the late part of the run to begin with. So without further ado, Let's get to it. It's also worth noting that the duels meta is very fluid because there have been a lot of changes in the past few months. And there's also been the release of the mini set which shook things up a lot. And Blizzard's been pretty quick to buff and nerf things that have seemed a little bit too powerful or a little bit too weak. So this list may not be the list to go to in a month from now. So please check back on this channel, maybe I'll release another video if they make any more changes. But for now, this is what I think. So starting off with our tier 1 classes, we have Warrior and we have Priest. I think I'm going to start with Warrior because I feel like Warrior is the strongest class in duels right now. So what exactly makes Warrior so strong? Well, first off, there are many ways that you can build Warrior and have it work. I've seen the Legendary Warrior, which is built around just having all Legends in the deck and hoping for the Discs of Legend as the second passive choice. I've seen Battlecry Warrior, which I've run a lot, which depends on getting the double Battlecry totem and the all together now. I've seen Rush Warrior, I've seen Bomb Warrior, I've played Cthune Warrior, with the old Cthune and the Disciple of Cthune and the Cthune buffers and that works too. Basically there are any way that you want to build Warrior you could probably make it work. You could probably even do a, a Nazoth Warrior and have it work with Rattlegore. This is just because Warrior cards are really strong right now in duels. Uh, the Rush Hero Power, which lets you attack twice, is really good with Run Thack and the Double Legendaries to generate giant stats on these minions that are getting summoned twice, which is really hard for a lot of decks to deal with. And going on the Bomb Warrior side, if you're playing Bomb Warrior, you have a lot of armor, you have a lot of healing, it's hard for decks to get through that much health to be able to kill you. And Warrior just has access to all of these tools to finish the game as well. You know, by getting that armor and that health, you can get to Nazoth, you can get to uh, Cthune, you can get to your other finishers. 
You know, it's just... There's a lot of ways you could do it with Warrior. And a lot of these builds end up so powerful at the end that no other class can compete with them. And this really all shows up... When I get later in runs and duels at, at high MMR, you're facing upwards of 50% plus of Warrior at 8 plus wins. You know, we're talking Disc of Legend after Disc of Legend Warrior over and over and over again. Because it's so easy to take that deck so so far in the run. You know, you get offered that treasure. Pretty much guarantees A plus wins, I feel like. So the stats kind of show show it. You know, as you're playing duels, you'll feel it. Warrior is the best class right now. Rounding out tier one, we have Priest. And if you played a lot of duels, you know that when you get later in the run, you face a lot of priests. And it's pretty easy to see why. Uh, priest, again, has multiple builds that work. You have your Mind Flayer build, which deals one damage every time you cast a spell to the opponent. And that's really strong in the early part of the run, where your opponents aren't going to have much health. And that just whittles through their health so fast that... It's really hard to deal with. And then on the other hand, you have the Heal Priest, which uh, also has a, a couple of different archetypes that you can make with that. But which has the hero power, where if you heal yourself and you still uh, are damaged afterwards, you can draw a card. So obviously this is going to generate a lot of card advantage for you over your opponent. It's going to give you survivability by having healing. And the longer the game goes on as a Heal Priest, the better off you're going to be. And that that card advantage can be really hard to overcome at times. If you're playing a slower deck and you go up against the Heal Priest, you're going to feel bad. Unless you're Disc of Legend Warrior, in which case you're like, I don't care, I'm going to make a million stats. But, also on the Heal Priest side, we have Dragon Priest, which I've seen, you know, a decent amount, I'd say. And that deck also can be really strong if it gets the right buckets and the right treasures. So with that version of the deck, you're getting the uh, Dragon Discount minus 2 mana, the Dragon Affinity, as your first passive treasure. And you're playing the Taunt Dragon uh, Dragon Generator as your active treasure. And the way that works is you're just spitting out these really cheap dragons all game long, and you have the healing, the card draw from the healing power to replenish your hand. And again, if that is built the right way during the run, it is incredibly strong and hard to deal with. Now personally, I have not played much Priest lately. I just got my, my first 12 win run with Priest not too long ago. But... Just from playing against the priests, you get an idea of what they do really well and what they do poorly. But I think that priest does not really have many weaknesses. Um, in the early part of the run, like I said, you're going to have that, that damage to the hero to be able to carry you through. And using the Shadow Word Void, you always have the threat of just dumping out a ton of damage and board pressure right away. And Priest has these Discover effects like the Shadow Visions and the Thrive in the Shadows to be able to pull that Shadow Word Void out of your deck. And as an early game threat, really it's only Warrior that has that really good answer. Well, I'm not going to say only Warrior because, you know, Shaman could have like Lightning Storm or there could be like uh, other board clears that could happen. But Warrior with the Rush Minions has a pretty decent answer to those uh, 0 to health suckers that come out of the Shadow Word Void. And if you don't have an answer to those, you're just dead in the first three games of a run. And they have enough other threats as well with Lyra, Lyra uh, generating cards and the Radiant Elemental that, you know, eventually you're going to have to play something on the board to try to kill them and they're going to Shadow Word Void it and you're going to feel bad. So in the early part of the run, Priest, very strong. In the later part of the run, they're going to be generating so many cards, so many spells, 
and just looking to outvalue you and eventually kill you through creating a lot of spells and getting this spell damage. And it works, you know. Whenever you're generating that many that much card advantage, and whenever you're just dealing damage with everything you play, eventually you're gonna kill your opponent. So Priest, in a very good spot right now. I'm not really sure they have any weaknesses. Uh, I guess their only weakness is running into Warrior, because Warrior is better. And that's gonna do it for Tier 1. These two classes are the best classes in duels, and if you play one of these two classes, you're just gonna have an advantage over your opponent, no doubt. Next up, we have the Tier 2 decks. Now, these decks are decks that can relatively easily go 12 wins if you get the right build, but there are glaring weaknesses to all of these classes. I like to separate it into the upper tier 2, the middle tier 2, and the lower tier 2, just to give you an idea of which of these classes I think is better in general, but all of them have the potential to go 12 wins if you get offered the right choices. So starting with our upper tier 2, I'd like to begin with Shaman. Shaman really has one game plan that works better than the other game plans, and that is the Battle Cry Shaman. Now, where the variety comes in is that there are different ways to build Battle Cry Shaman. You can go the Murloc route, which is relying on Murlocs and the gentle Megasaur and the Nothing Can Stop Us to generate a big board and finish the opponent early with a lot of board damage and maybe having a little bit of, uh, of weapon damage and hero power damage to help, fi help finish it off at the end. But really your game plan is building a big board and dealing a lot of damage to your opponent early on in the game. The other way to build Shaman, also Battle Cry, is Elemental Battle Cry. And lately I think I've been seeing a little bit more of the Elemental version than the Murloc version. Uh, I think it's because the Elemental version gets offered the altogether now more often. But again, the idea is to build a big board early on, get a little bit of chip damage in, and then send your big battle cries like Fire Elemental to the opponent's face, dealing 8 damage with a double battle cry totem. And really, you're going to have like uh, Storm Strike and Rockbiter Weapon, along with the Hero Power, which gives your hero Wind Fury, to just be pushing a lot of damage. In the middle game, you want to get the game ended before you get to the late game, for sure. And really, the biggest threat I think that this Shaman deck has to offer is the Payload Totem Specialist, which, after you get to the later games in a run, if you get that Payload Totem Specialist early, you're going to be giving yourself a ton of t cheap totems that buff each other, and really just put out a board that the opponent can't deal with. I feel like the majority of my losses to Shaman later on in runs is when they draw that Payload Totem Specialist and they just spit out a whole bunch of totems on turn 2 or 3 and they have an Eyesore and they're just like buffing all those totems. That is nearly impossible to deal with unless you have Barov as a warrior or you know some kind of early game treasure maybe that will answer the, the totems but it's hard. The reason why Shaman doesn't make it into Tier 1 is because I feel like as the run goes on, Warrior just Warrior and Priest both eclipse Shaman. Uh, eventually that face damage becomes not as good as your opponents get more answers from treasures, from picking up certain buckets. Uh, the deck power level just gets higher and higher and Shaman kind of peters out a little bit. Also, if you aren't offered the right treasures as Shaman, the run can be dead in the water. And though you do get offered the All Together Now, the Double Battle Cry pretty often, or the Emerald Goggles is also a good one for Shaman, sometimes you just don't hit it. And then it's a struggle to get to three wins, because you don't want to lose rating, and you want to get, you know, you want to break even at least. And that can happen with Shaman. You don't really see that happening as often with our, with the tier 1 classes, 
Which is why Shaman sits right at the top of, of Tier 2 instead of being Tier 1. But, regardless, Shaman is still a really strong class, and you should give it a try if you haven't. Uh, it's not too hard to get 12 wins with Shaman. So now let's talk about mid-Tier 2 classes. And for me personally, this class is one of my favorites in duels, and I have a lot of success with it. But I think a lot of other people struggle with this class, and I'm talking about Hunter. So when we're talking Hunter in duels, really the best build is the Death Rattle Hunter, for sure. I think if we're talking about the other builds for Hunter, such as Secrets, or the, uh, the Hero Power Damage build, just not really strong enough to compete at the higher MMR of duels. You're going to find yourself struggling to even get to three wins with those decks. But Death Rattle Hunter, in particular, if, you have offer if you're offered the right treasures, the right passive treasures, can really become a powerhouse. Thanks, in particular, to the card Death Strider. Death Strider just lets you do some absolutely ridiculous things sometimes. Whether it be summoning a board full of 5-8 taunts, if you wait long enough, or even just firing off a ton of pings to kill your opponent. I mean, later on in the run, that Death Strider is going to be triggering eight, I mean, six Death Rattles. And if you have the double Battle Cry Totem, that's going to be 12 Death Rattles. Which, if you're talking like, uh, I don't know, a Rhino or a, a Tonk, you're just going to ping your opponent to death. And I've done that before in some of my videos, actually. So Hunter has some really, really strong plays. The glaring weakness for Hunter is that it is very weak early on in the run. Very strong if you get to the later games with the right build. But early in the run, you're going to be struggling against Priest. You're going to be struggling against Warrior. You're going to lose a lot of time against these guys. And getting to that second passive treasure at the third game, after the third game can be a challenge sometimes. And this is why Hunter falls into mid-tier 2 for me. The other class that I would consider mid-tier 2 is Paladin. So let's talk a little bit about Paladin. Paladin is incredibly strong at the beginning of a run. The most common build being the Royal Greatsword, with the Divine Shields and the Res Hero Power right now. That deck, in particular, you get that Greatsword out for 5 mana in the early part of a run, you smack the opponent in the face, you pull out a Legendary, and the game is over, because they can't answer that. The issue I have with that deck, and with the class in general, is that as the run goes on, and you pick up more and more buckets, the idea of your deck gets watered down, you get some cards that you don't really want to be pulling with your greatsword, or you get some cards that you don't want to be rezzing, and the deck kind of falls apart, unless you get offered the right buckets, unless you get offered the right treasures. And that's why for me, Paladin really falls short of the classes I've mentioned before now. But all in all, I would say Paladin is a solid mid-tier 2 deck, which can get to 12 wins if you get the right build, but which also is much stronger in the early part of a run than later on in the run. So that's going to do it for our mid-tier 2 classes. Next, let's talk about the lower-tier 2 classes. So these are classes with even more weaknesses than the classes I've already spoken about, but which still can go 12 runs relatively easily if you are offered the right options or in specific metas, or if you're facing the right opponents. So let's start with Mage. Mage is a class where if everything works out, you're going to feel so strong by the end of your run that you're going to think that Mage is Tier 1. But don't be fooled, because Mage has a really hard time getting to that point. Out of all of the Tier 2 classes, I'd say Mage probably has the weakest games 1 to 3 in a run out of all the classes that I've listed so far. 
Let me first start by saying that the main build for Mage that really seems to work best is the Quest Mage, where you're trying to complete the quest along with Embercaster and use the quest with the Embercaster to take four turns in a row and end your opponent that way. So, Mage really works best as a combo deck. I've seen a few other builds of Mage, but they never really seem to get too far in the run. Uh, such as Elemental Mage or the Infinite Arcane Mage, which I played a little bit, bit of as well. And I really think the Combo Mage is the way to go with Mage right now. But what, what you'll find with Combo Mage is that early on in the run, where you just don't have enough health to survive, you're just going to get destroyed by decks that are too fast for you. And it can be really difficult to get to that third game sometimes, well, get past the third game sometimes, and get to your second passive, where I think Mage really starts uh, picking up a lot of strength after that second passive, uh, because before then, Mage is just too slow. It helps if you get the spell discount as your first passive, but a lot of times you don't get offered that, and you're just stuck with a lot of spells that cost too much, and you just can't answer your opponent's boards. But if you do get the spell discounts, and especially after that second passive, Mage really just takes off. But it's really hard to get there, and a lot of times you're going to have two losses heading to that third game, and you're going to be looking a losing run right in the face. So that really is the issue with Mage. It's very polarizing. You're either going to build this super powerful deck with Mage, or you're going to end up with a real stinker, and you're going to be out early. And that feels kind of bad, especially if you're trying to gain rating, if you're trying to gain gold. I guess the word that I would use is inconsistent. Mage is very inconsistent. And it also depends a lot on what kind of opponents you're facing. If you're up against Heal Priest a lot with Mage, Mage is insanely good against Heal Priest. Uh, very hard to lose that matchup. So if you're facing a lot of Heal Priest, then... Mage is just going to be the best class then. But if you're facing Disc of Legend Warriors, on the other hand, you're just going to get overrun a lot of the time. Unless you get that mana cost discount on the spells, or the right card generation, uh, where you can just continuously freeze the opponent's board over and over again. So those are my thoughts on Mage. Uh, risky, inconsistent, and lower tier 2. Next up, and I think that this might be a little bit of a controversial one, I have Rogue. So I don't see a lot of people playing Rogue in duels. I hardly see any Rogues at all at higher win totals. Uh, I see a lot more Demon Hunters, for instance, or Warlocks than Rogue. But I think that Rogue is better than these classes. Maybe a little bit underutilized. So let me explain the type of rogue that I think works. I think that the weapon rogue with the hero power that summons a 2-2 dagger for you to use is definitely the best rogue right now. The hero power that generates a 1 cost minion for 1 mana is just too slow right now. Uh, you need to be doing something every turn that impacts the board with the way duels is right now. So. I don't think that's the right way to build Rogue. By going Weapon Rogue, you have a game plan, and that game plan is to kill your opponent before they can execute their game plan. And in the early part of a run, I found this Rogue to be actually really strong. Using the Mancrick, using card draw, and using low cost spells to cycle through your deck quickly, and summon the wife, maybe throw out a Shadow Step to pull back your Mancrick and play it again and then you're getting like 6 damage and 3 7s from that. A lot of classes can't keep up with that in the early game. For instance, you're going to run over mages, so if you're playing against a lot of mages early on in a run, the weapon rogue just absolutely destroys the quest mage, or any other kind of mage really. It's a very, very favorable matchup for you. However, rogue does have a ton of weaknesses, which really hold it back from becoming an upper tier 2 class. The biggest of which is any class that can heal themselves or generate armor, which as you know, warrior and priest are tier 1 right now, so 
That's really what's holding Rogue back. I still think Rogue has a really strong early run potential with the weapon Rogue. Because they just deal that 20 health so fast. In the first game, uh, you know, you have the Vis, you have Wicked Stab, and you have the, the Dagger, and the Deadly Poison. And you're just going to be doing so much damage that your opponents can't keep up with that little bit of health. As the run goes on, Rogue gets weaker and weaker. Unless you hit the right treasures. If you hit the right treasures, you know, it could still work. But getting the 12 wins can be a real challenge. Uh, it's still possible. Which is why Rogue is tier 2, but not as easy as some of the other classes, and you definitely need to get lucky to do so. Lastly, at the bottom of tier 2, we have a class that I have very little experience with because I don't really like playing Demon Hunter very much. Uh, ever since Demon Hunter first came out, where it was so overpowered, I just uh, developed a... I don't know, I just a, a dislike of Demon Hunters, so I don't like playing them. But I have played against a lot of Demon Hunters in duels, so I have an idea of what the what decks work and what people are playing. So as far as I can see, there are three builds of Demon Hunter that people are playing right now. The first build is the Token Demon Hunter, where you're using the hero power to summon tokens, the 1-1 one -one chargers. You have the spells that summon the 1-1 one -one chargers in your deck, and you're buffing up your minions, uh, like the Blood Herald or the 9-mana the, uh, the Dragon. Uh, and also getting the Fell Guardians out there that get cheaper with every minion that die. And that deck can be pretty strong if you have the right treasures, like if you get the Recycling, you can build up so much armor with these 1-1s. One -ones that uh, it could be hard for an opponent to kill you. But I think that build of Warrior, I mean that build of Demon Hunter is quite weak against Warrior, and Warrior is the top class right now. So there's that. On the other hand, you have the Death Rattle Demon Hunter, which is kind of a, a new creation, I'd say, like recently in the past month this has come about. Which relies on, you know, those, those cheap Death Rattles that summon more minions from your hand. And then the 7 mana guy that pulls Death Rattles out of your deck. This deck to me seems, uh, it's okay. I think that it probably has a hard time getting the 3 wins because it feels like it's kind of weak early on. Um, I don't really have much experience with it though, so it's hard to say. But I don't face too many of these Demon Hunters at high win totals, so I doubt that the deck is that strong. And it never really feels that overpowered when I'm playing against it either. And the last build of Demon Hunter that I've seen is just the face Demon Hunter with the hero power that gives you uh, an attack every time you play an outcast card. I think early on in the run, this deck is probably pretty okay early on in the run where, again, just like Rogue, you're facing people with only 20 health, you're going to be able to deal that damage really fast. But if you go up against uh, like an Armor Warrior or the Heal Priest, just like with Rogue, you're going to be stuck in the water. And I think later on in the run, the Face Demon Hunter really falls off as these Warriors get more and more armor, and the Priests get 40 health, and they can heal up, and they have all these spells generated that heal as well. Just not the right meta for Demon Hunter, I think, right now. And... That's really represented in the amount of Demon Hunters that I play later on in the run. Uh, really falls off. Don't really face many Demon Hunters after 8 wins. And that's why Demon Hunter lands right at the at the bottom of Tier 2 for me. I was even considering of, of going Tier 3 with it. Because I think it... I, I really do think it's weaker than Rogue and Mage. Though it does have a good matchup against Mage. Mage is way better against Priest and Warrior though. But I do think it is better than our Tier 3 classes, which are coming up next. So now we're going to round it out with the Tier 3 classes. And these are classes which, in order to get 12 wins with, you're going to have to get really lucky. And you're going to have to get, I don't know, Keldwar or some other kind of big treasure, I think, in order to make this work. These are classes which you should avoid if you can. 
If you really do like playing in these classes, then just hope you get lucky, I would say. And these two classes are Warlock and Druid. And it's a shame because when Duels first came out, I feel like these two classes were both pretty strong. But as time has gone on, as the treasures have changed, as the passives have been redesigned to offer uh, based on your deck composition, other classes have gotten stronger, and these two classes have fallen behind. And the, uh, the Warlock hero power got nerfed at some point too. So first, Warlock. Warlock has a couple of different builds that work, and I say work, but by work I mean, um, you know, they'll get you to three wins pretty reliably, but probably not going to get to 12 wins. Uh, the first of these builds is the Discard Warlock, which uses the Discard Hero Power and Kill Mox. Um, usually has Cthune too, you know, Sociologist and some Soul Shard creation. Sometimes runs Ticketus, sometimes runs Draxus. But either way, I think this deck is just too weak. It can be okay early on in the run when you have... I mean, if you're running the the, the Baron Scavenger, the one mana 6-6 six, six taunt, if you have not that many cards in your deck. That plus the, uh, the three mana lifesteal guy can be pretty strong early on in the run. But really, Warlock just doesn't do enough broken things, I feel like. Other classes, as you go further on in the run, they have things that they can do that just end the game on the spot, and Warlock just does not have that. You're going to find yourself falling behind against Warriors pretty much all the time. You're going to find that Priests have enough answers for all of your minions, Unless you get really lucky with like the Bone Web Egg and the uh, the Malchazar's Imp and the the Golem early on the Silverware Golem, and you just create this board that's too too hard to deal with for a priest. Like maybe you get through then, but I think that Warlock really falls short of these high tier classes, and it's really hard to win as a Warlock against these classes. In addition to that, later on in the run, they they just uh, they peter out a lot like Paladin, where the more cards you're adding to your deck, the weaker it's getting. And it's hard to say what treasures work best for Warlock, for Discard Warlock. You probably want the All Together Now and um, maybe Battle Cry or Goggles. But even then, like, you don't really have a game plan in mind to take advantage of these treasures. You're just hoping to, you know, get some good treasures, like a Keldalar or something, and get it out cheap, or a Locust, and using that early on to uh, just dominate the game that way. Like, maybe you can w get to 12 wins that way. But just on the Warlock deck on its own, it's really hard to get there. Like, you're, if you're running Cthune, uh, the new Cthune, the Shattered Cthune... You're never going to get through your deck to get to that Cthune in the end. Outside of like the, the very early games in the run. You know, your deck gets to like 40 or 50 cards and then you're just never getting to Cthune. If you're playing Rustwick, it's the same idea. You get later in the run, um, you know, later in the run your, your deck is so full that you're just not going to be drawing these primes quick enough. And Jaraxxus is just too slow. Like a 9 mana thing. So many games are going to be over before 9 mana. You're playing against Disc of Legend Warrior, you're going to get run over before then. No doubt. Then on the other hand, you have the Soul Shard Warlock, which is summoning a 3-2 Flame Imp every time you uh, add a Soul Fragment to your deck. This one, I think, is a little bit better than Discard Warlock, but still falls short of Warrior, which is the main problem. Warrior with its board-centric hero power, where it's just sending these rushers out and clearing your board so easily. Your board's just going to get wiped out over and over again. Even with the advantage, like, you know, you get the Spirit Jailer out turn 1 and you get the 3-2 Flame Imp. That is the power play for the Soul Shard Warlock. And Warrior can just answer that pretty easy a lot of the time, you know, and that's a problem. 
when your most powerful play is answered by the strongest class that you're going to be facing a lot, that's a problem. And the Soul Shard Warlock just doesn't really have anything else besides that. You know, you're relying on these 3 2 Flame Imps, which gets answered so easily by the best classes. And I think later on in the duel's run, you're going to want to be doing things that kill your opponent directly. You don't want to be relying on boards too often because Warrior is so strong right now. And, like, even against Mage, like, Mage is just going to freeze your board, and they're going to complete their quest, and they're going to kill you that way. Like, you just don't have the face damage to be able to end the game. That's why, War that's why Warlock is really weak right now. Just not enough ways to end the game. Not enough ways to do face damage. Uh, hero power that just doesn't do enough. And now, bringing up the rear, we have what is one of my favorite classes to play in Constructed. You know, I was a Druid player for a long time in Constructed. I know Druid. I played a lot of Token Druid. When Duels first came out, I played a lot of Token Druid. Played a lot of Spell Druid. But, just gotta say, Druid is really weak right now. Token Druid is a class that absolutely relies on you having an early board game advantage and taking advantage of it to end the game. And when Warrior is so strong, when Priest is so strong, it just ain't happening, you know? You, you're not going to be able to build that board consistently enough. Outside of like when you have these insane uh, Giverling turns on turn one and you're able to create like a, you know, like a wide board of four or five minions right away on turn one. A lot of times you just can't do it. The he the warrior rush hero power, which lets them kill two things with a rush minion, just wipes out your your uh, tokens, and then you're left with spells in your hand that are buffing nothing, and it feels really bad. I think as long as warrior is as dominant as it is, druid is going to be bottom of the bucket. Token druid, at least. Talking about Spell Druid, which is another way to build Druid, using the hero power that does 2 damage or gives you 2 spell damage, and usually runs C'Thun, and you know, a lot of spells. I think that that Druid, if you get offered the right treasures, that Druid can be powerful. And the treasures that I'm talking about are Double Time, which is very rare, or the 1 spell discount. And if you have a lot of card draw with that, it can work. That The spell druid can work. But it's so inconsistent that druid is just going to end up at the bottom of the list here. You're going to maybe hit that, I don't know, 1 out of 5 or 10 runs. And you're going to feel really bad the rest of the time. Big druid with the uh, hero power that discounts your, your 5 plus cost things by 2. is just too slow right now. Too unreliable. Probably the... The worst build of Druid right now. I used to play a lot of that too when Duels first came out. But the way it is now, you're just going to get run over. And really, that isn't really fun. You're playing Duels to have fun, to build your deck, to get to that second passive, and see where your deck goes from there. And Druid just fails to get there too often right now. So I would really recommend against playing Druid... And that really makes me sad because, like I said, I love Druid. I love playing Druid. But it's just not good in duels right now. So yeah, avoid Druid if you can. So yeah, guys, that's all the classes. That's going to complete my thoughts on what's good and what's not. You can see here, these are the tier lists that I have come up with. And again, just to keep in mind, this can change. You know, duels is a game mode which is constantly evolving where people are coming up with new ideas all the time because, you know, I'm sure that the best deck is yet to be discovered. There are so many cards out there, so many combinations, and Duels doesn't really have the resources out there which uh, allow people to pull, you know, the best decks as easily as in Constructed or some other game modes. So get out there and, you know, try these other classes. You know, even though I rank some of these classes low, like I said, any class can get to 12 wins. And maybe you can come up with the next best deck that just takes duels by storm and uh, 
and reinvents everything. Plus, the next expansion is coming probably not too too uh, far away, and that's going to shake everything up again. So maybe I'll make another video when that happens. But for now, this is going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys take away some information from this and it, that this is useful to some of you guys. And if you guys like this, I'll try to do more content like this in the future. But for now, this is going to do it. Thank you guys for joining me, and I hope to see you on the next one. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.